Financial well-being is the ultimate measure of success for financial literacy educators. Achieving adult financial well-being is a journey, and educators can help in a big way. Hi, I'm Margie. I'm an educator and recent graduate, and I'm concerned about the education young Americans receive when it comes to managing money and their personal finances. This is what led me to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's, or CFPB's, building blocks of financial capability. These building blocks provide the framework for youth financial literacy education and help define how students learn the skills and knowledge they need to achieve financial well-being as adults. We've put together this short video series to help busy educators like yourself learn about the building blocks. In this video, we'll learn more about the building block called Executive Function. To find out more about the Executive Function building block, I met with Chuck Kalish, the Director for Science at the Society for Research in Child Development. Hi, Chuck. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. It's great to be here. So, Executive Function. Executive function is the ability to control your behavior, to not just do what comes naturally, but to do what is appropriate in the situation you're in. Thinking before you act is probably the main takeaway. You know, waiting your turn before you grab the food off the dinner plate, or not running out into the street because you, your ball went in the street. What sort of skills are you teaching these very young children about executive function? One of the most important skills of executive function is the ability to delay gratification, to know that I shouldn't have it now, I should wait. Another important skill is the ability to inhibit a prepotent response, to not do the first thing that's on your mind, but to stop and think, is that really the right thing to do, or maybe should I go to the second choice? A third important skill is the ability to sort of monitor how things are going. Should I keep doing what I'm doing, or should I change my behavior? Well, these are not things that I was aware of when I was five years old. But am I the only one? I'm not that good at managing money, to be honest. When you're young, you don't have a lot of thought about the bigger picture, so when you have money, you kind of spend it all right at once. I was spending my money on restaurants, spending on my friends, stuff that I really shouldn't have been spending my money on, honestly. How do you keep yourself from making those same decisions now? So if it's on my mind for like two weeks, I'll get it. But if it's just like a quick thought, I'm usually like, okay, maybe I should hold back, think about it first. I see. That's exactly what executive function is. Through these early lessons we take in, maybe we don't even realize we're learning, but we begin to learn the importance of planning and waiting as part of our effort to have better rewards in the future. But if you're like me, those types of learning lessons just kind of popped up randomly in life. They were never formally taught, but they can be, and they are, even at an early age. Which is what led me to Jay Davis, he found unique ways to bring these types of lessons into his classroom. We're going to be talking a little bit about finance today. Let's get started. So what are you going to spend the most money on? What are you going to spend the least amount of money on, okay? So Jay, I got to pop into your class a little bit earlier and see the exercise that you were doing with your students. Will you talk to me a little bit about that? Sure. Earlier we were doing a budgeting activity that allowed students to think about the decision-making process when it came to budgeting a normal household budget. Executive function is one of the building blocks of financial literacy. How did that specific one fit into your lesson today? Well, when it comes to executive function, they're able to go through and, and really think critically and analyze some of the choices that they have in life. It also allowed them to come up with some problem-solving skills when it came to figuring out how they were actually going to spend a normal household budget and a paycheck. Our paycheck is only so big, and we have to be able to divvy up those slices to be able to cover all those things. Executive function skills are important to achieving financial well-being later in life. Incorporating financial literacy into an already crammed schedule may be challenging, but a little creativity can help. Because executive function is a series of cognitive processes, you can introduce activities that help students develop their executive function skills while also developing their English, social studies, or math skills. The team at the CFPB have developed lots of activities and resources to help educators incorporate these lessons into any class, and you can find them right on this website. Imagine that. Explore the site to learn more about CFPB's financial capability resources for youth and find activities to use in your classroom. You can also check out our other videos in the series. Or please visit consumerfinance.gov youth financial education.